Alright, alright, it's episode 6 of Getting Geeked, I'm your host, Danny Allen, yeah, episode 6, what is going on, you're watching and listening to Getting Geeked with your boy Danny Allen, today is a moderately interesting episode, we got San Diego Comic Con was last week, and we've got some uh, some announcements some announcements regarding uh, Marvel, DC not so much. We'll get to it. We got some Nope reviews. Uh, I'm gonna be reviewing reviewing Nope, the uh, Jordan Peele movie, and uh, we're gonna be talking about the Santa Clauses for some reason. Christmas time is uh, n- not not yet Christmas time yet, but we got some news, and then we got some. Some fun, a fun topic that's probably not going to happen. Scooby Doo 3. Um, let's start with that. Scooby Doo 3. What? Scooby Doo 3? Yeah, Scooby Doo 3. So, somebody asked James Gunn what the possibility of an R rated screen, uh, not scream, an R rated version of Scooby Doo with the original cast. And, and James Gunn, I'll leave the tweet, you know, he said, I would love to do that. I just don't know if I have the time right now. Right now. And everybody's like, oh, he said he doesn't have the time right now. Listen, I don't think, I don't think Scooby-Doo is allowed to be R-rated. So if that's what you're attached to, that's not going to happen. But I do... I do want a third Scooby-Doo movie with the original cast. It doesn't have to be R-rated. It could be PG-13. I think a PG-13 you can get away with. Not an R-rating. Not an R-rating. Not at all. Uh, I don't think James Gunn... I think that should be a priority for James Gunn. Because do it while you can. You know, those actors are still around. Do it while you can. And... The fans are there. I don't know. It would probably be for streaming. I don't think the budget would warrant a theatrical release. Plus, I don't know if the second movie was as successful as the first. So I think that that would be like the perfect HBO Max movie. Scooby-Doo 3 with the return of everybody. Uh, I think he was just being modest. And he was, and he didn't want to let the fans down on Twitter when he says, "I would love to do it, just can't do it right now." Freddie Prince said he was down, uh, and he's doing his own, his wrestling podcast, and he's writing for wrestling again, I think. So, yeah, Scooby Doo. Uh, it's like almost twenty years old. Yeah, it's twenty years over twenty. Yeah, twenty years old this year, I think, two thousand two. Wow, that movie still slaps. It holds up. It's the best Scooby Doo adaptation ever. So, if somebody asks me about Scooby Doo, I show them that movie because it's the only thing that matters. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. No, I'm not sorry. Because Scooby Doo is peak filmmaking. It was supposed to be uh, PG 13, but they cut out a bunch of stuff. I'm sure you know that. If you're. Watching a clip about Scooby Doo Three, I'm sure you're a diehard Scooby Doo fan, so I'm assuming you know the first Scooby Doo was supposed to be PG thirteen. That's how James Gunn wrote it. And then the studio said chop 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 shing 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 to the script, and it was PG. Lots of innuendos, lots of stoner humor. Which is uh, S tier filmmaking. All right, Scooby Doo three. Do you want this movie? Do you want a Scooby Doo three? If so, do you need it to be R rated, or will you like it to be? Would you mind if it was PG or PG thirteen? I personally would want them to meet in the middle and make it PG thirteen. 
but it is Scooby-Doo, so you have that child's audience. So I'm thinking you're going to have to do a PG. Uh, but there is a YouTube, I think it's a fan series, that's like Riverdale, but with Scooby-Doo. It's pretty whack, I'm not going to lie. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Moving on. Coming up next on Getting Geeked with your boy, Danny Allen. Uh, let's talk about it. Bernard. Bernard's back. See, now I made a big old video about Charlie not being back. Talking about the Santa Claus. I think this show's called The Santa Claus Is. There's more than one. And I thought they had recasted Charlie. Apparently, he's not even in the show. What? That's a whole nother argument. But that's my whole main thing. How are you going to ha- have everybody come back and not the, the dude that plays Charlie? That's Tim Allen's son in the movie. Santa Claus's son. Santa Claus Jr. Um, and then he also had the head elf, Bernard. Bernard was not in uh, the Santa Claus 3. He wasn't in the Santa Claus 3. He was supposed to be. I didn't even realize he wasn't in the Santa Claus in the Santa Claus 3. Uh, I think they did they recast him? I think they recasted Homeboy in Santa Claus 3. He's back this time. Which which makes me a little more interested to watch than I was prior. Uh because you know the it's the ensemble that makes these franchises great. It's not just Tim Allen, it's not that one actor. It's everybody and their whole dynamic. It's what makes the franchise the franchise. So I'm really stoked. Bernard's coming back. Are you guys excited? Is was this a make it or break it for you? Like it was for me. I think it. I think it, it warrants. I wouldn't say warrants a boycott, but, but it's it would it was definitely not on the top of my list to watch like immediately. So, but now I'm gonna check it out. Is this a week to week show? Because I really don't want it to be. It is Disney Plus, so it's gonna. It's probably gonna be week to week. So thirty minute episodes. <sighs> just I just why not just make a, a movie? Just make it a movie. Okay. Bernard in the Santa Clauses. Are you happy he's back? Were you upset he wasn't back? Did you forget he like me he, that he wasn't in uh, the Santa Claus three? Dude, I remember when the Santa Claus 3 came out. I was like, dang, they're making a Santa Claus 3. Because I'm like, a trilogy, baby, a trilogy. And this was back in like, 06 or something. Wow. And I was I was still a stickler on trilogies. It's like, yes, we have the Santa Claus trilogy. It's finally complete. And now we're getting the series, which is kind of like, I'm considering it an epilogue, an extension. Just a little something extra, because you still got the trilogy. A little something extra. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bernard. Right on. I'm digging it. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? I can dig it. Coming up next. Coming up next on the Getting Geeked podcast. Before we get to this next topic, I want you guys to head to geekedmedia.com geekedmedia.com that's my blog that's the entertainment blog where i put up all the the fan posters i make and then uh, all the blog all the reviews or editorials i write I haven't wrote one in a while just nothing only when i something really big happens i was considering writing an article about dc dc and their comic con failure uh but I, I don't think there's enough news to even warrant that kind of an article just yet. So I'm putting it on the back burner. Anyways, go to geek go to geekedmedia.com for the blog. <laughs> Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Let's get into this Jordan Peele movie. Nope. Oh nope, nope, nope. Nope. Did you guys like nope? Is it the next is it the next Get Out? Is it the next Us? Some of you might think that. Do I think that? Eh. Eh. 
It was aight. It was aight. I will say this about Nope. It was shot brilliantly. Cinematography. As a film, it was well produced. The production value was there. Didn't look cheap. So, objectively, it's a nice film. It's a nice looking film. I always say objective. Films are objective, not subjective. Everybody, everybody, oh, film's subjective. No, it's not. Okay? I'll put it to you this way. You have sushi, right? People like sushi. People love sushi. Some people fucking hate sushi. So, if somebody hates sushi, am I going to ask them, Hey, uh, what kind of sushi do you recommend? None! Because they don't like sushi. So, some people like thought-provoking movies. Some people just watch movies in the background. Some people, uh, some people don't care if it's uh, a, a deep movie. They just want to laugh. If it's funny. If, it was, if, if a movie is funny... It's automatically good. It could be a shitty movie. So when I say film is objective, there are objective things about every movie that will make it quote unquote good. If it has this, this, and this, it's a good movie. Now, my problems with Nope are storyline problems, which are subjective. Because a storyline, you know, it could go like, oh, it could have gone either way. So, but depending on how much thought you put into it, not everybody likes thought-provoking movies. And yes, I know about Nope, and I'll go into a little bit of spoilers, like the the monkey storyline, and the reveal at the end. You know what? I'm, I won't go into spoilers because there's nothing really to spoil. Okay, if you think this is an alien movie with with aliens in it, you know you might be disappointed. I was a little disappointed because I was like, oh shit, we haven't gotten a really good alien movie in a long time. What's the last good alien movie? Like District 9? I'm talking like, not like uh, not like Prometheus or like Alien, like the Xenomorphs. Uh, Co- Covenant was dope. I'm talking about like an alien invasion movie where like aliens come to Earth. I think District 9 was the last good one. The fourth kind was great. But I think those movies came out around the same time. But the point being, I thought Jordan Peele was going to be like, here's my take on an alien movie. And that's kind of, it was at first. It was at first. Um, you know, some of it was a little overacted. Kiki Palmer, she was kind of playing it up a little bit. I didn't like how dumb she was in the movie. And they try to have this this vibe, you know, kind of reminded me of Twister a little bit, that, you know, the Tornado movie, where there's kind of a camaraderie and and trying to get the, get the, uh, the weather, they're they're trying to race each other to all the, the locations first, and they're trying to, they have this entraption, this contraption thing where it tracks the tornadoes, and they're having to launch it, so, Nope has this certain vibe like Twister where they're trying to capture this UFO on on film. And that part of the story was great. Like, this whole build-up thing. My issue with the movie was the ending was like super... It was like a letdown. It didn't warrant... Everything that led up to the movie, the ending, didn't warrant the reveal. It was very underwhelming reveal. I'll say that. And the monkey stuff was the most violent um, parts of the movie. And some may argue you don't even need you don't even need that monkey story plot to get to get the whole point across for this movie. It doesn't need to be there. I I liked the monkey stuff a little bit more than the whole movie because like it was more in your face. It was very graphic, and but it was off camera too. So that's it's all about what you hear. So they're really it's very eerie. You know you know so. I like Nope. It was fine. It just didn't. I like Get Out the best uh, because you could rewatch that movie like and notice things like, oh shit, like she really is a a racist. Like the (laughs) and then Us was fine. 
it had that creep factor, uh, but the real like the reveal was I think better in us than it was in Nope because at least you get kind of a, oh shit, but the whole Nope reveal it wasn't a, a reveal. It was just the UFO is an organic being, you know, like the Earth is an ocean and space is an ocean, and it's a monster. It's a predator. It's like okay, I get it. It just didn't didn't wow me. Like Get Out did or Us, those movies, you could re. I wouldn't rewatch. I think I've only rewatched Us maybe once or twice, probably once. Get Out I've seen twice, but like Nope, I don't have the need to rewatch it. I'll just go watch Twister, or and then the Fourth Kind or whatever. So, uh, yeah, dude. Like, and then people are ganging up on uh, Logan Paul. Because he has a bunch. She did a whole thread. I don't even like Logan Paul like that. Uh, but he, he did a whole breakdown on his Twitter about what he thought of Nope. And there's dogpiling on him, you know. Because, you know, granted, half of them are dogpiling on him just because he's Logan Paul. And the other people are, like, diehard Jordan Peele fans. I'm not a diehard Jordan Peele fan. He's fine. He's a good filmmaker. Like I said, the movie is well put together. It's just some of the... Some of the story choices... So get to it, bro. The movie was very. It was it was edited like it was fine. Uh, just the middle of the movie kind of just dragged a bit. Just dragged. So you had a big old build up drag, and then you get the 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 reveal, and then it just ends. Uh, yeah. So Nope was. Uh, will I buy Nope on Blu-ray on 4K? No. No, I won't. If it's on streaming, I'll check it out again. But I'm not going to buy it on 4K. I kind of want like a, a box set, maybe, of Get Out, Us, and Nope. But he puts out a movie like every couple years, so I don't really think that's possible. I'm sure there might be a box set. But like I said, like this is not a movie you're like... I wanted to go see that movie in theaters that weekend because I didn't want to get spoiled on the internet because I'm all over Twitter and like film the film topics are all over my social media so I'll easily get spoiled so it wasn't a I need to go out and see that movie because I want to see it it's just I, I wanted to see it because I didn't want to get spoiled and then when I saw it I was like ah, could I have gotten spoiled yeah kinda it just didn't it didn't wow me so, like the characters were cool I, don't, I think I gave it a three out of five. A three out of five. It was like a middle of the ground movie, you know. I'm saying like it wasn't bad. I recommend like watch it for sure because it was some of the scenes were very tense. He knows how to he knows how to stretch those tense moments. And then uh, there wasn't a lot of jump scares. There was a lot of like eerie, creepy shots. My favorite shot of the whole movie was in the trailer. Was when the UFO was. Drenching the house with blood, and you see the shot, wide shot, all the blood on the house. And that was that was sick. I just wanted I wanted them to get like, and that the one shot I will say when they get abducted, when the whole crew gets abducted, and they're actually in there, and it's like a sheet. They're rubbing up against a sheet basically, which is like, ugh. I liked how in the, up in their face they were because you you don't see the other end of that stuff a lot. So, but then they didn't really do much with it. It just kind of, you can hear him screaming still, like, how long does it take for them to die in the UFO? Because you can still hear him screaming, like, way later in the movie, so. Unless those are new people that they're that it's picking up. It's not like there's a group of people just chilling in there, though. Uh, yeah, so, Nope. What did you think about Nope? I, I dug it. It was fine. I'm not going to say I loved it, but it was a good movie. Check it out. Uh, Because now you know, film is objective. More people will know. There's people out there that know about film. And, like, you should listen to those people. Because, you know, they've they've studied the shit for, like, 20 to 30 years. I'll I'll take those people's views on something than somebody that just watches movies to laugh or whatever. Like, oh, I'll put it on in the background. If you can't watch a movie and take it in. And you're not watching. You're looking. You know, you can look at things. You're not watching, and you're not 
in ingesting these ideas for what they are. And I totally understood all the nope ideas. So don't come at me in the comments. You just didn't get it. You just didn't understand it. No, I I got it, dude. It's just what they were what he was trying to sell me was not that special. That reveal wasn't that special. If it ended with like at the end of Get Out when he he goes into the basement and he's like everybody's like getting he the dude's a surgeon, right? So he's like, oh, you see the lab and everything's graphic and gory. Like, what if he got abducted and you see, like, the aliens working on people and shit? Like, that's the end of the, movie, the reveals. Like, they're working on people. And their arms are cut or whatever the fuck. Suspended. Like, like that would have been a sick reveal. And what if he, yeah, and then what if, uh, and then what if he, like, busted out of the UFO or, like, rigged it up or something. And he, he, he remembers all that stuff, but he, he manages to make it out. And then people don't believe him, you know. It's like, oh, my, my, my sister. Because, like, what happened to your sister? Like, what if he gets uh, framed for the murder of his sister or something? Because he's got blood, her, her blood all over him. Because he, he was, like, in the UFO where they're trying to save her. And But he makes it out and she doesn't. And now, like, he has this crazy, like, story. Like, oh, I just saw, like, all this shit. People were getting, people were getting analyzed and... Operated on and aliens almost got me, and like they couldn't, they're not gonna find the sister's body because like something happened. Like he jumped out of, of the UFO and then it blew up or something like that. But they're not gonna believe him. I think that would have been a better ending. Damn, dude, could you imagine, bro? Could you imagine that ending? I'm just, oh, bro, let me let me get in the room of Jordan. Let me get in the room of Jordan. He didn't want to do that though. He wanted to go more like. Uh, it was an organism, and it was a jellyfish of of space. It's a space jellyfish. Okay, bro. What did you guys think of Nope? Comment below. Let me know what you guys thought. La, 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 la. Har harass me on Twitter. Harass me on TikTok. Get up in my comment sections. Let's battle. Let's do battle. It's all in good fun, though, right? All in good fun. Coming up next, we get the horn guy outside. Oh yeah, the elote guy is back at it again. Oh yeah, you gotta love it. Mayonnaise and corn. Jesus. But seriously, coming up next, I'm gonna. Okay, we got Comic Con. That's that. This is. The, I'm wrapping up the podcast. I'm wrapping up the podcast with the Comic Con news. The Comic Con came and went. Who won? Did DC win? Did Marvel win? Who won? I think we all know the winner here. It's safe to say that. Marvel. Marvel won Comic Con. Marvel won. And DC's over here fucking around. They brought Black Adam on stage. I think I might have guessed that. And they showed the Black Adam trailer. Sick trailer. I have a reaction to that. If you guys want to check it out. It's on the channel. YouTube channel. And then they... Okay. let's. Black Adam comes out. He stands there. Smoke, you know. Fog lights. All that shit. He stands there. Lightning in the background. But all he does is stand there. He didn't say nothing. He didn't give a monologue. You know, like, Loki came out and gave a monologue. Uh, Johnny Depp as Grindelwald came out, gave a monologue. No, the, 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 the Black. The Rock comes out as Black Adam. He just stands there. Awkward, bro. And then, like, the smoke dissipates. And then you see he's standing on a podium. Ugh, it's crazy, bro. It was cool. I was tripping out. I'm not going to lie. I was tripping out. I was like, oh, shit. Black Adam's here. Oh, man. People were loving it. It was sick. So he go he okay. So then he comes back out and he's got his normal shit on, and then we get the trailer and then people ask him a question about Superman. He got booed, bro. Rock got booed. Who boos the Rock? DC fans do. Bro, if anybody asks you a Superman question and you don't have Henry Cavill waiting to come out on stage. Oh, dude, I don't even know if they should have allowed people to ask, to ask questions. 
He fumbled. He fumbled hella. He he's like, who would win between a fight, Black Adam or Superman? And then the Rock's like, well, it depends on if uh, who's playing Superman. Oh, dude, that's the last thing you want to say at Comic Con in front of the fans, thinking Henry Cavill's gonna show up. He should have been like, good question. Why don't you ask him yourself? <gasps> Dude, Comic-Con would have... Oh, dude, that would have ended Comic-Con. They would have canceled it. Why don't you ask him yourself? And then we have Henry Cavill. He comes out on stage. Maybe he's in his Superman shit. Because The Rock was in his Superman... Or The Rock was in his Black Adam shit. And then they do a matchup. Stare each other down like a UFC match. Zack Snyder comes out, breaks him up. Nah, he won't. WB's not that cool, bro. What the fuck? What is going on? Don't go to... Dude, don't go to Comic-Con if you're only going to talk about literally two movies, dude. Black Adam and Shazam. And the, and did they have the balls to, to advertise Black Adam and Shazam and not even have Zachary Levi and The Rock together on stage? Not, they didn't have them face off. Like, I, and like dude, these are two separate movies. I get that. And they're not... Meeting each other yet? I get that, but don't have them on. Don't have them on the same day and like. They're there. Let them go on stage together, dude. Like have them all. It's like the Shazam verse, dude. They fumbled hella th- this past weekend. Oh, dude, I wasn't even there, and you can just sense the energy on online just go down for DC. And then you had a whole because DC was in the morning and then Marvel was at night. The whole day just felt like, bam, and then it was. It was like this. It was like a flat line. All fucking day. Flat line news. Nothing was going on. Oh, it was so fucking sad for DC. And I know they have this Flash drama. And I know they have this Aquaman 2 drama. But dude, they still have Blue Beetle. Just wrapped production. They have they have leaked set photos of Blue Beetle on Reddit. Bring out Blue Beetle. Advertise Blue Beetle. Uh, Batgirl's done. You know. Why don't we get a Batgirl teaser? Something, dude. This is Comic Con. Even okay, Marvel knows that. Everybody thought Marvel was gonna fumble because they have D twenty three coming up. We don't even know if fandom is gonna happen this year. What the fuck? What is going on over there, bro? What is that? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on with this DC? I feel like I'm fucking Seinfeld. What's going on with DC? What is going on? Like seriously, I know Zaslav just took over, but like I said last week. This was his time to put a stamp on it. This is a new era. Oh, now it's now the new era is mid because they didn't do shit for Comic Con, and that's all people are gonna remember this next year. Because they have a whole year until Flash and Aquaman come out, and all that fan, DC fans are gonna be like, "No, is yeah, they flopped Comic Con. We don't have no news. Nothing's happening." Fumbled. You blew it. Wow, guy. Wow. What are you doing? Go home. That's what they told. That's what they should have just told The Rock. Go home. Don't you have a Terra Mana commercial? Yeah, dude. I, it was. It was. I didn't. I, w- I didn't have high expectations from DC to begin with. I, I. I didn't expect Henry Cavill to actually be there. I expected at least an updated slate. Just just have your slate on as a picture. What is... Come on, Zaslav. People are hyping you up, bro. This was your time. And then you got Jim Lee talking about, oh, Snyderverse on another panel. Undercutting the whole pan, uh, Warner Brothers panel. Snyderverse is done and uh, we don't have any plans to do anything with those movies or characters, blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, that's not the time to... To talk down on, like, even if that's what's happening, you don't say that. You're killing the mood. You're killing the vibe. They're vibe killers, bro. They do that to themselves. They're setting a terrible standard, dude. New Warner Brothers. But what was cool about Comic-Con? Oh, shit. Did we get Deadpool 3? No. No, we didn't. I think we should have. However... 
it's understandable. They they have a bunch of movies already slated, ready to go. We got the Black Panther trailer, which is fine. I also have a reaction to that. I reacted to all the trailers, all the superhero trailers for Comic Con on the YouTube channel. Boom. So Black uh, Black Panther two trailer and then uh, She Hulk trailer was fine. They still need to work on her CGI. Cause boy, that is even if Daredevil is in She Hulk, they need to fix her she her CGI. Cause that is not it's not. And they're like, oh, it's not formatted for YouTube. Then don't put it out. They have all these other dope trailers that look sick. So what is what? There's that's not an excuse. Oh, it's not rendered to perform well on YouTube. Okay, well, you you need to have that standard. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. So yeah, She Hulk, Black Panther, the Ant Man trailer was shown. It got leaked. I watched it. I'm hyped. Modok, let's go. Modok, let's go. From the plot leak, there's a plot leak on Reddit. They say that Yellow Jacket is turning into Modok. I don't know if I like that. We'll see how it happens. We'll see. Because he he did go into the quantum realm. But wasn't wasn't Modok a totally different character, like separate from Yellow Jacket? So this is the MCU twisting and turning things at their cause they want to. What really broke Comic Con and won the whole weekend? Homeboy announced two Avengers movies. Two. Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, and Avengers Secret Wars. The Secret Wars. That's early, dude. Secret Wars could be like a two or three part movie. Like three parts. That's how big Secret Wars is. Kang Dynasty. I think they could wrap that in one movie. Maybe that's... I think they're considering those two Avengers movies, like part one and part two, just with like uh, Infinity War and Endgame. It has that same energy and that same vibe, so I get it. Uh, But people are going to be upset, dude, because the X-Men, they're definitely... They left Phase 6 blank on purpose. You're going to have like two or three X-Men projects leading up to Secret Wars. Whereas you had... 30 something of movies with the with Avengers characters leading up to Secret Wars. So yeah. And that's my beef why they should have brought in the Fox X-Men into the MCU cuz you already have all that established, all that lore, 20 years of X-Men established. You bring them into Secret Wars. Boom boom boom. Mesh them together. You got Deadpool in there. It just would have worked better. No, granted, I can't say that wholeheartedly, 100%, because I haven't seen what they're trying to do yet. But I already know, from the time they introduced X-Men now, till Secret Wars, you're not going to have that build-up that you need, like the other Avengers characters had. Nearly 20 years at this point. 2008, by the time Secret com- Secret Wars comes out, what was it, 2025? That was borderline 20 years of uh, character development for the Avengers characters. So, yes, I'm very hyped for the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. I just finished Secret Wars, the comic, motion comic, from 2015. I'm going to re-read, I'm going to read the Kang Dynasty. Um, I'm not too familiar. I read the Wikipedia and all that stuff. And I'm hyped, dude. At least we have some kind of plan and, not structure, but you know we're not we're not left in the dark here. They announced a bunch of other stuff. Like we we already knew we were gonna get a, most of the stuff that they announced. Like Daredevil, we already knew a show was coming, but we actually got a title and the episode count. But that's not coming out for like two years. So they're gonna be dropping in Daredevil in these other shows like She Hulk, uh, Echo, leading up to his own series. So that's cool. Build up. The X-Men weren't built up at all. So they're going to have maybe one or two movies. Possibly three. Uh, I have to relook at Phase 6 in their slate. And how many open spots they have. Uh, but they still got to put like Armor Wars on that list. Because it wasn't announced. 
uh, for phase six or five, which is concerning. Fantastic Four is starting phase six, and then you got Secret Wars as the capper. So you know Doctor Doom is phase six's villain, along with Kang. But Fantastic Four is repping the Doom angle uh, when it comes to Secret Wars. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Uh, we didn't get any casting news for Fantastic Four. Uh, we got a release date. Sick. So all we need is a director. Um, speaking of directors, Avengers Kang Dynasty. Shang, Shang-Chi, director, is directing Kang Dynasty. Sick. Let's see what he can do with it. Some of the shots in Shang-Chi were pretty crispy. Crispy chicks. So, yes. I'm excited. Now, who will be, I think, you're going to get all the Avengers, most of the Avengers, in Secret Wars. Because you can't have Secret Wars without all the Avengers. I don't know if that includes the original Captain America and the original Iron Man. I don't know. If they bring them back, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, if they come back, it's going to be for Secret Wars, but I'm not putting up my money on it yet. Maybe, depending on where the universe is in a year or two, I might put some money down. But for for right now, for the Kang Dynasty, I made a fan poster of my roster. It's, It's going to be a stacked cast of Avengers, but I don't think it's going to be crazy amounts like Endgame. Uh, I didn't originally have Shang-Chi as an Avenger for for Kang Dynasty. And then shortly after I put that poster together, the director was announced that I was a Shang-Chi director. So I added Shang-Chi to the roster for Kang Dynasty. Because uh, that's pretty much a, uh, a given that he's going to be in that movie. So Shang-Chi and then... Captain Marvel, Ant-Man Wasp, uh, Captain America, the new... Sam is going to lead the Avengers. That's his thing. He took over He took over for Captain America. And Captain America was the leader of the Avengers. So, yes. He absolutely will be the leader um, when, when Kang Dynasty comes out. The, next up, then you got War Machine. He's going to be the... That's probably his last movie as... The Iron Man, because they have Iron Heart coming, and then Armor Wars. So Armor Wars will probably lead into Kang Dynasty, which so I'm thinking that he will pop. War Machine will probably die in Kang Dynasty, but he's gonna be like the de facto Iron Man for that in that roster. He's like one of the last OGs around. That's why I don't think Tony's coming back until Secret Wars if he comes back at all. So and then we got uh, I don't think Miss Marvel is gonna be. Uh, an Avenger, right off the bat, um, she'll be preoccupied for the Kang Dynasty. That's just my guess. Spider Man, I have him on the roster for Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. That's just wishful, wishful thinking. Uh, Secret Wars, he probably will be Kang Dynasty. He might be wrapped up with Sony, but he's been in um, all the new Avengers movies. Thus far, so I'm putting him on the poster. And then we have... I don't know if the new Black Panther will be in the Kang Dynasty. Probably. Probably. I don't know. I doubt it. We'll see. Shuri. Uh, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. I think it's his last movie. It was Kang Dynasty. Swan Song. White Vision. Has to be in Kang's Dynasty because we haven't we don't know what's going on. He, homeboy flew off, so he definitely needs to be in, in Kang Dynasty. White Vision, Scar- Scarlet Witch gone. Uh, then I think that's probably missing some people. I'm gonna have my poster right here. So, and if you're audio only, go check out geekedmedia.com, my YouTube channel, TikTok. I got motion posters. Uh, I should have wrote the roster down. I think when it comes to Kang's Dynasty, it's going to be a smaller cast. And then for Secret Wars, they're going to blow it up and have X-Men, Fantastic Four, 
and in Avengers. Everybody's in that in that movie. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. So, yeah, lots of news. Everybody has been pretty much talking about this MCU, Marvel versus DC stuff for the whole week, this entire week. So, uh, that's my whole take on it. Uh, just set your expectations low for the cast for Kang's Dynasty. Because, uh, yeah, they're leading in the Secret Wars. I don't, they're not going to give you the whole cake at once. So, But I am interested to see, like, Ant-Man has Kang. And I read the whole plot leak for Ant-Man. And Loki has Kang. So everything's set up. It's all teed up, unlike DC. Oh, we're going we're gonna to get another faceless Superman cameo at the end of Black Adam. I'm calling it. Calling it. And, and dude, just don't do it. Just if you're not gonna bring back Henry, don't have a cameo or bring him. Bring in another Superman actor. Just do it. Don't do this half-ass teasing stuff. Like we're over it. You did it twice already. We've already got two Superman cameos with no head. And end of Shazam, and Peacemaker. Don't do it. Bring back Henry. Apparently. Henry is the one that's not trying to come back. Because he's, he's fucking greedy, bro. He's, he's trying to get these bags. But they don't want to pay him. Well, how much is he asking for? To be honest, is he selling as many tickets as, as The Rock? As a rapper Danny Jr.? No, I don't think he is, dude. He's not. He's, Henry Cavill's not like a movie star. He's on The Witcher right now. That's great. He's not like a movie star. So if he's making these high demands like, oh, I want like $20 million for to play Superman for one movie or whatever. I don't know if they're going to want to pay him that. I don't know. I don't know. But that's the rumor. He he is waiting for them to pay them, pay him more money. So if that's the case, you can't be mad at Warner Brothers when... You know, they're they're trying, dude. Maybe they're trying to get Henry back. I gotta look at it both angles. If he's just being greedy, if he's if he's trying to pl- like pull a Nev Campbell, but like there's gotta be guarantees for Henry. He's probably gonna be like, I need a solo movie and I wanna do Justice League two and three. Those are probably like guarantees that he wants. And Warner Brothers is like, nah dude, we're gonna we're gonna keep putting you in cameos. Until we figure our shit out. And he's like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, I want to, I want to, he probably wants like a structure, which is, if that's where he's coming from, like for a, a creative standpoint, then that's fine. But if he just wants more bags, like, dude, like, come on, just be Superman. If it's good, you'll get a raise. Like, come on, bro. Don't hold up the fan base. So, I don't know. DC's in a weird place. Uh, Marvel's on a roll. Hopefully they hopefully they fix their VFX beef with with the VFX departments, pay them their worth, or don't put out ten projects a year. Let them work, but let them get some sleep. Like, come on, bro. What? Like, stop being greedy, Marvel, Disney. We're not. We're gonna watch it. Just make it good. Same with DC. Just make it good. What do you guys think about all this Comic Con news? Are you upset with DC? Or do you think they're chilling and they're going to announce everything at Fandom? You think they're, uh, you think they did a good job skirting the Flash and Aquaman too? You think that was a smart move? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. Um, what about Marvel? Are you, are you excited for the Kang Dynasty, Secret Wars? Or are you like, eh, I don't really like Kang like that? Or, uh, Oh, Secret Wars is way too early, and uh, they shouldn't do it this soon. And is that is that where you're coming from? Or, or I kind of wanted an, an Avengers movie, uh, not 2025, 2024. That's a whole like that's three years away. That's three years waiting waiting for an Avengers movie. But I'm not complaining. We get two in one year, so they probably pushed it from 2024 to 2025 because of VFX, because they don't want to pay their VFX people. It's probably what happened. 
I don't know. What do you guys think about this Marvel stuff? CDC. Comic-Con coverage. You've been listening, watching me, Danny Allen. It's your boy. Episode 6, Getting Geeked. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Have a good day. See y'all later. Getting geeked. Getting geeked. Getting geeked. Getting geeked. Getting geeked. Getting geeked. Getting geeked.